Cold cases, missing persons, unsolved crimes. This is a Monday Night Mystery with Mitch McCoy. It was June 9, 1995 in Alma, Arkansas. Six-year-old Morgan Nick was abducted from a Little League ball game by an unidentified man. She was attending the game with her mother and had joined some friends to catch lightning bugs. Morgan was last seen standing near her mother's car where she had stopped to empty sand from her shoes. This is a case that uh, has shook Arkansas uh, to the core and it has since June 9th, 1995. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on KERK.com, Fox16.com and across all of our digital platforms. I'm Mitch McCoy. You can ask the panel questions live using the hashtag Monday Night Mystery. Certainly a case that uh, many, including Colleen Nick, uh, Morgan's mom and her family pray that one day there will be answers to this case. And I want to bring in the panel tonight. On the upper left-hand corner, you have Latricia Woodruff. She's a police communications expert. Kelly Ward is to her right. You have Cara Boyd below Kelly. And then our very special guest is Colleen Nick, Morgan Nick's mom. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. I do want to get to Latricia. Uh, Latricia, kind of give us a rundown of this case and some highlights. This is, in fact, a case that you yourself covered as a reporter. Mitch, you're right. This is a case that I covered as a reporter back in Fort Smith, Arkansas. When I went to Fort Smith in 2000, this case was about five years old and it was very active at that time. I, on occasion, did several stories about the Morgan Nick case. So this case has stuck with me as well. And like you said, it was June 9th, 1995, when Morgan went missing from that Alma ball field. And she hasn't been forgotten since. There have been numerous leads on this. I, I myself have done stories again on this when they've gotten tips about this and gone to certain areas and, and looked for her and, and dug up certain areas. So again, this is has been a case that has has been in everyone's mind for the past almost 26 years now. And like Morgan's family, many other people are, are keeping hope alive that Morgan is found safely. So that's what we are here tonight to shed some light on this case and to talk to Colleen Nick a little bit about what's transpired over the years and what's going on in this case. And hopes again, we can shed some light on this and maybe bring in some more leads that are helpful in this case. That is what we pray for tonight over uh, the next uh, few minutes here as we talk about the show. And Colleen, it looks like you even have a special guest yourself. <laughs> yes, we have. Um, so I'm still at the office and we actually have therapy cats at our office and um, wanted to get on the call. So <laughs> well, we, that, that's great. We're, we're, uh, we're happy that you're joining us tonight. And I want to remind folks that uh, you can ask uh, anyone on the panel, I'm, maybe even the cats, uh, some questions here. <laughs> Just use the hashtag Monday Night Mystery here on Facebook Live, and we'll be sure to try and get your, your questions answered. I, I, I want to get to Colleen Nick. Uh, Colleen, can you walk me through what what has the last just few years been like? I know that there have been tips that have come in. I was reporting uh, several years ago, and I remember I was on the road to Oklahoma because authorities were following up on tips. Mm -hmm. You have an amazing foundation uh, as you uncover um, and, and raise awareness about missing persons cases. We're looking at video from a documentary that is being worked on. There has been so much attention on this case even to this day. Kind of catch us up to what's been happening the last few years. So Morgan's case will be 26 years old this coming June. Um, so for 25 and a half years, we have been searching for her. And I never dreamed, I never dreamed that night at the baseball field when she went to catch fireflies that we wouldn't ever be in this place and that we would still be here 25 and a half years later. We have an incredible law enforcement team here at Alma. And then, you know, we have additional agencies, the Arkansas State Police, the FBI, um, U.S. Marshals, Crawford County Sheriff, just so many agencies who work all the time on, on Morgan's case. We have um, officers dedicated to just working Morgan's case, and they still work it all the time. We still get um, leads. Honestly, we get leads every week, which is completely unusual in a case like hers, but 
um, you know, there's just a lot of awareness about Morgan's case. There's a lot of awareness because of the work that the foundation does for other people. Um, and I think with the law enforcement training classes that we do and, you know, our Amber Alert, just a lot of things that have kept Morgan's case out there in the public. And so um, we have a team of really dedicated officers who run those leads and who, who look at those. And now we have this documentary that we've been working on um, with a producer from Hollywood who came in here, been working on it for a year and a half. And um, they're looking at, you know, talking to you know, Netflix and Amazon and some of the, um, the platforms that are out there. We don't know yet when it's going to launch, but our hope, our hope is that somehow when it does, the, the person who knows the truth or the people who know the truth will find the courage to come forward and tell us um, what they know. You know, our family's fight is still for Morgan and people ask me all the time, you know, do I think she survived? Um, I don't know. I certainly hope she did. No one has ever been able to prove to me that she did not. And so my fight is for her to bring her home, to be able to someday look her in the eye and say, I never stopped fighting for you. Uh, you know, and if Morgan somehow did not survive, she still deserves to come home. Hmm. Morgan is not a number. She is not a um, statistic. She's not an anonymous um, person that's out there. She's a little girl. She's a daughter. She's a sister and a granddaughter. And she is someone that deserves to be fought for. And so our family with no hesitation continues to fight for her so that she can come home to us. You know, it surprises me, um, actually it doesn't, um, that, that you guys get tips um, almost every week on this case because if you think about it, um, and I was gonna turn to Latricia and kind of get her advice or her opinion too, is so a lot of these cases, information gets, gets very scattered and, and you don't get a lot of information. But Colleen, you have done so much um, to, to, to keep Morgan's name out there. Um, and, and there's not a person in the state, uh, reasonable, reasonable person I should say, that, that wouldn't know the name Morgan Nick. Um, even if they don't know who the person is, uh, they've heard Morgan Nick in some kind of fashion uh, while living in Arkansas and that is credit to you um, for, for what you're doing to, to keep her name out there. Latricia, from your law enforcement perspective, uh, I mean, it, to me, it doesn't surprise me that, that law enforcement gets tips every week because of how well Colleen has, has kept this case alive. That's exactly the difference here, Mitch, I believe, because there are some cases that we have at the Conway Police Department that uh, are cold cases and we've not gotten tips on them in a while. Every now, now and then we will get a tip on a certain case, but to get tips on a case every week, that's a testament to what Colleen and the Morgan Nick Foundation is doing. They are doing what they're supposed to do and that's keeping her name out there keeping her on the minds of people here in Arkansas. Like you said, there's probably not a person here in Arkansas who has not heard of Morgan Nick and know what happened and know that she is missing. And that makes a difference, getting the, their names out there, making sure that we keep their names in people's minds and letting people know that she's still missing and she still has a family who loves her and wants to know what happened to her and perhaps bring her back home. So yes, that is the difference here that Morgan Nick Foundation is really doing an excellent job of keeping her name out there and this is what they should be doing and this is what anyone who has someone missing should be doing because the police working all of these cases, but they have to go on to other cases. But when they get leads, then they jump back on these cases. And if there are leads every week, then they're going to be following those leads every week on these types of cases. I want to welcome folks who are just joining us tonight. Uh, we are live across all of our digital platforms. You can join in on the conversation using the hashtag Monday Night Mystery on Facebook. And there are just a couple points that I want to comments I want to reach out to just they didn't use the, the hashtag, but I think they're worth mentioning. Brittany saying, I think about her every day when I look at my kids. Uh, that goes to the direct work that Colleen has been doing with the Morgan Nick Foundation. But also uh, Destin saying, 
I admire her strength, uh, specifically talking about Colleen. Um, Colleen, how, how do you do it? Uh, there are so many people that are watching right now. Um, I don't think that, that there's anyone on this panel uh, that would disagree with me by, by, by saying that your kind of strength and resilience um, is, is admirable, uh, especially with uh, a missing person case. How do you do it? Because Morgan is worth fighting for. That's how I do it. Um, you know, I still remember the day that Morgan was born um, at 4.44 a.m. And I remember the doctor announcing, you know, it's a girl and we thought we were having a boy. So we had this moment of shock and they handed her to me. And I remember holding her for the first time and just looking down at her and um, just how she captured my heart. And you know, that's the day that I knew that I would always fight for her. And I did not expect that fight to look like this, but Morgan is worth fighting for. And so on the days when the grief um, takes me to my knees, I know that at the end of that day, I have to get back up because if I'm not fighting for Morgan, pretty soon nobody else will be fighting for Morgan. Our law enforcement here in, in Alma and across our state, they have thousands of other things to do. Uh, and my job is to make sure that Morgan stays at the forefront of that. You know, we started the Morgan Nick Foundation really um, not as a way to look for Morgan. We actually don't do anything for Morgan, but because her name is attached to the foundation that keeps her name out there, you know, we fight for other families whose missing person should get just as much um, dedication and fight for their person as, as Morgan does. You know, we have at any given time in the state of Arkansas, at any given time, we have around 400 missing people. And those kind of, they come and go and they change, but we have kind of a status all the time of about 400 people that are missing. We worked 1,500 cases just from the state of Arkansas last year between missing children and missing adults. Our job um, at the foundation is to build that bridge between the family and law enforcement so that when someone is missing, um, that communication doesn't break down between law enforcement and the family, that the family knows what resources they should be able to expect, what kind of questions they should be asking law enforcement. Um, hopefully we can talk with law enforcement as well and help them navigate that real um, emotional time that a family is in so that everybody comes out of it better so that we learn to work together and then we find missing people and bring them home. The other thing that we do is our, is our education programs. We go into the schools across Arkansas, kindergarten through college, and we talk about whatever is relevant to that audience, whether it's home alone safety, um, knowing your phone number and your address, online safety, sex trafficking, sexting, wh whatever that looks like, whatever a school needs to do, we adapt our programs for that particular school. We were face to face with 40,000 kids a year until the pandemic hit. And so since then we've, been working with the department, the Arkansas Department of Education and uh, transitioned all of our in-person learning to um, online modules that the Department of Ed is going to be pushing out uh, over the summer so that teachers can use it in the classroom, it can be used virtually, parents can go and pull those lessons down and you still have a way to talk to your kids about how to be safe. I, you, even using this show, you know, we, we dedicate shows to, to, to these people uh, and I say these people because they're all victims, but missing persons, uh, you have cases of homicide, cold cases, things like that. Even this show that's completely dedicated to Morgan, you're talking about other victims and, and that just, that warms, um, that warms, that warms my heart. I, I absolutely love it. I admire you and everything that, that you and your foundation are, are doing. Um, I do want to go back to, to June 9th, 1995 for people who don't know. Um, and we've been playing some video and it's this sketch uh, and then also this red truck. Um, is there anything you can tell us about that composite sketch and that red truck that, that we keep seeing and, and is, is even to this day in her missing persons flyer? And I'm not sure about the red truck that you're showing uh, in particular, but the two children who were playing with Morgan, they were older than her, um, a few years older than her actually. And she had not been playing with them throughout the evening. So after she became missing, they both talked about a red truck they had seen in the parking lot um, parked very close to us. And 
they described the individual who was standing next to that truck and, and some of the things, some of the interaction with that individual. And so um, that's really where the description of the truck came from. That's where the composite drawing came from, where those children were the children that were playing with Morgan. I gotcha. And, and let me, t I want to go to Kelly Ward, former prosecutor. Kelly, we, we always talk about these cases that develop over years. And in this case, almost coming up on 26 years um, in, in just a few months in June, it sounds like this case in particular, law enforcement got a lot of critical information on day one, on that day that Morgan was reported missing, which no doubt will help in not only finding Morgan one day or and or prosecuting a case. Absolutely. Um, as we talk about all the time, the faster you can get that information, the better the information is going to be. Um, the fresher it is in the witness's mind, um, things tend to fade, especially when you're talking about um, interviewing children. And, you know, if you know Morgan was six, that they were eight or nine years old, um, those memories are going to are going to fade for them. They're not going to have the same memory of that event, you know, months or years later. So it's so important to get that information, to get it recorded, um, and to um, be able to use that later. I mean, just in the in the search, as we saw the composite sketch, um, or in a possible case sometime in the future. So whenever um, we have cases where, you know, maybe it was a cold case that got solved you can go back and you meet with witnesses and they're able to review their inter recorded interview or re read the written statement that they wrote. And then they say, okay, oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Oh, you know, maybe I'd forgotten about that detail, but I remember it now because I've just listened to myself explain it to the detective. Mm. So that is critical um, when doing any investigation is to get as much information as soon as possible from the witnesses. And turning to Cara Boyd, who's a former prosecutor turned defense attorney, it's so critical for law enforcement to do this. And it sounds like law enforcement did a pretty good job getting all of those accounts. Um, so that way they don't have an issue, um, you know, years down the road uh, in a courtroom. And that's true. Um, like Kelly said, um, you want to get those material witnesses um, down, get their statements down. Um, that's going to be, um, you know, the case in chief for a prosecutor, those eyewitnesses um, that can link to um, Morgan's uh, disappearance. And so those eyewitnesses can describe, I mean, eyewitnesses are um, great tools for a conviction here. Um, and they can identify the, that suspect, um, identify the vehicle, anyone attached to that um, disappearance is going to be material. So you definitely want to have all of that front loaded um, for a, a, a successful prosecution. I want to welcome folks who are just joining us here on Monday Night Mystery. I'm Mitch McCoy. We're talking about Morgan Nick. It's truly the case that shook Arkansas back in June of 1995. Uh, that is when the six-year-old girl uh, was uh, catching uh, f uh, lightning bugs uh, it, it, near a ball field uh, that night, and uh, she disappeared. Um, the, the the search for her has has been ongoing, and as we're talking to Colleen Nick, Morgan's mom, we're learning that tips are coming in every week on this case. That's certainly uh, great news, especially for um, trying to to find Morgan and, and bring her home. I, I want to um, remind folks that you can leave a comment uh, on Facebook using the hashtag Monday Night Mystery. We will try to get to some. I do want to get to one, and Colleen, feel free. If there's something you, you don't want to answer, you know, just just let us know and, and we'll we'll keep moving along. Uh, of course, these are live questions and, and sometimes, um, you know, there's just certain things that are so critical to a case that we don't want to share any um, information that will that will uh, expose or, or, or tamper a case. So I do want to get to um, Colt's question and this is um, a, a question coming in right now. It just came in on your screen. Colt is asked, using the hashtag Monday Night Mystery, has Morgan's mom or dad done any DNA tests like Ancestry just in case she is alive and ever takes one, perhaps it would link to them. 
Um, is that something that that is real, or is that something that that you've considered? Um, is that something that that you feel comfortable um, asking? We we have certainly done that. Absolutely. What was that process like? Uh, you know, for us, it was just it's just one more thing to try. Um, it, it's worth trying. It's worth just in, just in case. Uh, you know, you hear stories all the time about people who find their biological families, you know, they were adopted, those kind of things. I actually have a very good friend uh, who was adopted as an infant and through some of the DNA um, stuff with Ancestry, she found her bio biological family. So wow. on the chance that somehow Morgan has grown up, um, that she survived and she takes a, a DNA test, we, we, we want ours out there. For we sure. want the opportunity for her to be able to find us you know we're going to do everything that we can to search for her and try to make her path back to us as absolutely as easy as we can um and we understand that at six years old morgan may not remember us honestly um j just like kelly was talking about you know she was six uh if she survived i'm sure that she's had trauma in her life so it's our job to find her uh, and to do everything we can to to make that path back to us easy. Uh, there's another question coming in <clears throat> on Facebook here in, in Colleen. I don't know if um, you've ever watched any of our shows before, uh, but we often uh, have heard from detectives going through and looking at every registered vehicle in, in the county. Uh, or maybe even in the surrounding counties. Just uh, last week, the North Little Rock Police Department told us that in Samantha Olson's case, the detective is going through 12,000 trucks uh, that, that look uh, maybe familiar or registered in the county that might be a suspect. So this question's coming in now from, from Haley. Were they ever able to get a list of registered owners of the type of vehicle in question? And she's using the hashtag Monday Night Mystery. They did in the very early weeks, the first month, they did a hands-on, hands-on check of over 9,000 red pickup trucks. You know, the fact that we live in Arkansas and we border Oklahoma, um, we've no shortage, no shortage of red pickup trucks, but our team has been diligent. The, the numerous agencies who have worked and they absolutely put their hands on those vehicles and, and looked at them. Well, and I know that um, they probably, and, and going maybe to Latricia on this, um, they, they probably didn't just look at, at Elma. Um, they probably did surrounding areas too, right? Surrounding counties. Yes, I would imagine that they did do surrounding counties and even into Oklahoma because Oklahoma borders, it, it's easy for someone to drive in to, to Arkansas from Oklahoma and then get back into Oklahoma. And then just all of the the towns that are around Alma, people travel, so you never know. So I would imagine that those trucks that they were looking at were not just trucks from Alma and not just trucks from Arkansas. You, that's 100% correct. Um, we, you know, Alma sits right at the crossroads of what used to be I-40 and I-540 and literally sits at the crossroads right here in this little town of 5,000 people. And so that the, we have somewhere between 80,000 and 100,000 cars a day who come through this community and stop here to get gas and stop here to eat because we're right on those crossroads. And then we're um, literally 10 minutes from the, the border of Oklahoma. You're 100% right about that. And it's um, was just a, it's a crazy spot to be in when you have a child that's abducted because in 10 minutes you can be out of the state. Mm -hmm. You can be on the interstate headed towards Missouri. And so it was um, so much harder than it should have been. But, you know, they did the roadblocks and the hands-on searches and they didn't just um, search here in Arkansas. They went out. We have had leads from all over the world and, and they checked them. You know, it, it is my absolute conviction that someone around here knows the truth about what happened. I think the answer is here in our state. Um, the person who knows what happened or a person who knows the person who knows the person, you know, a family member, somebody knows. It would be my absolute hope that somebody would see this show and that they would just want to do what's right. 
be anonymous, but, but tell us the truth. Let us know what happened. Let us get justice for Morgan. Yeah. I, I want to, um, I, and we're kind of in the process of wrapping up here, but there are a couple of questions coming in at the very last uh, minute here. And, and this question is coming in from Lindsay uh, using the hashtag Monday Night Mystery. I'll, uh, she says, I'll ask again since I forgot to include the, the hashtag. Have there been any recent credible new leads or any new updates in her case that are in line of bringing Morgan home? And, and Colleen, I, I referenced that and, and, and I know um, we want to be careful here, but I do know that there was something just, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, I remember driving over actually into, in the process of getting to Oklahoma, where authorities were, were there uh, following mm -hmm. up on, on, a, on a lead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some really good leads in Morgan's case. We have some things that law enforcement are working on. Uh, the documentary is definitely going to cover some of that. Um, you know, I feel like we're as close as we've ever been to getting an answer in Morgan's case. Wow, that that right there um, is is a very uh, that's a that's a strong belief, and I know that you know information too that. Uh, um, you know, especially with the foundation that uh, makes you feel hopeful here. Well, I'm very fortunate to have excellent communication with our, our law enforcement team. Mm. And, you know, it's something we've been able to build over the years. And so fortunately, they do share things with me that are, are ongoing in Morgan's case. And um, I, I, I just believe that we uh, may finally be where we need to be to get an answer. Uh, Colleen Nick joining us here, and, and again, Colin, feel free, you know, let us know if there's a question that you can't answer. Uh, this question's coming in uh, from Lisa. Lisa, was this location easy to see a, um, from a road, or do you think that a person uh, planned to be there to, to take Morgan? That might there's, be a complex question. There's been a lot of debate on that over the years, because if you're not from Alma, you wouldn't know where the ball field was. However, you can see the lights from the ball field from, from the, the crossroads of the interstate. Um, you know, again, there's been a lot of debate with someone passing through and they stopped off and came to the ball field or is it someone who's from here and is familiar with the area? Um, I think what I believe is that it was someone from here. I don't think someone stopped in off the interstate. Uh, I think it's someone from a, around here, not necessarily from Alma, but somewhere in, in this vicinity Fort Smith, Oklahoma, is someone that's familiar with this area. Mm. Uh, and this will be our last question because Colleen, I also know that uh, you're you're staying late for us, and, and we appreciate that. Uh, Courtney is asking, what is the documentary called, and where can it be found? It's called Still Missing Morgan, and it is not yet up on a, a social media platform. But it, we we will let everyone know when that happens. You think it's going to be on a on a you know, major carrier? Uh, are you guys working towards maybe a Netflix or? Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a projected timeline for, for when it might be available? You know what, there, it's, it's, it's out there now there with, you know, several agencies or entities or platforms, whatever it's called, looking at it. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, hopefully within a few weeks or a couple of months, I would think that we'll have it all settled. Well, in, in the world of uh, social media and digital uh, media here, you can almost find anything online. So uh, no surprise. Well, um, I, Colleen Nick, um, thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. Um, you are a, a wealth of information uh, and you have, have been so helpful. Uh, and, and I actually, before we wrap up, I do wanna go to Latricia one more time because you, Colleen, ju just with, with your awareness and, and what you have done in the state of Arkansas, um, you, you truly have brought missing children home quicker. Uh, there is no question about it. Uh, you have opened law enforcement's eyes uh, to how important it is to, to you know, uh, get on a search. Uh, and I mean, I, I immediately just think of um, the Morgan Nick Amber Alert. Uh, and I know mm -hmm. that it was changed in recent years, but it's people still call it that. Uh, and, and, and we asked to have it changed so that people wouldn't be confused because we were the third state, guys. We were the third state to implement that alert. 
But as it became more popular and it grew and, and it was being traditionally called the Amber Alert, we were afraid that people would not associate that if we were calling it the Board of Nick Amber Alert. So we actually asked our state police to change the name so that there's just not that confusion, there's not that hesitation. You know, we've been really fortunate that Arkansas law enforcement, Latricia, you know, Arkansas law enforcement, they're good people. They want to make a difference. They want to change how this looks for children and families. We just don't see hesitation when we come to our law enforcement and we, um, you know, liaison with them to work with families. We just have such good response from Arkansas law enforcement. If every state had law enforcement like we do, we could change the way our missing persons community looks. But Colleen, I believe that because of the work that you've done um, since Morgan's been missing with the education and all of that in the Morgan Nick Foundation, that you have really helped law enforcement to get a little bit better in doing these types of things. This is not something we ever want to have to do. We don't want any missing children. We don't want to have to work these cases. But because of you and the Morgan Nick Foundation and all of the information that you bring, and again, the education, I believe that law enforcement across Arkansas, uh, they're more aware and they are learning more about how to handle these types of cases. So I appreciate you for that. Uh, and I pray and I hope that one day we can bring Morgan home or at least find out what happened to her because uh, it's clear that she was loved by you. And just looking at some of these comments on here, people that didn't even know you, didn't know Morgan, are invested in this and want to see her come home. So that's my prayer for you today. You know, we know that 2% of children like Morgan make it home. Uh, she's considered to be a stereotypical abduction, you know, complete stranger abduction, missing longer than two years. Only 2% of those children make it home alive. And, and I get that 2% is not very much, but I'm telling you that from over here where I'm sitting, what that looks like to me is that 2% of children make it home. You guys know the stories, Elizabeth Smarks. Sean Hornbeck, uh, J.C. Hey, 18 years in captivity, birthed two children in captivity. Um, the three girls from Ohio, whom I've had the pleasure to meet and work with since they came home, you know, one of them also birthed a child in captivity. They all survived. They all fought. They all wanted to come home. They beat the 2%. And just because we have found them does not mean that we have found every child who survived. Every right is missing deserves that kind of fight so that if they're out there waiting to come home someone on this side is fighting to get them here yes i remember interviewing you about elizabeth smart when she came home and uh, you already had hope that morgan would be home but i can remember that day and all of the hope that you had in learning that elizabeth smart had come home that morgan too could come home yeah i've always believed that Morgan can come home. Literally no one has ever proven to me that she didn't survive. And, and I get it, I, I get it. I know the statistics, I know the possibilities, I know the probabilities, but no one has ever proven to me that she didn't survive. And what kind of mom would I be if I wasn't willing to fight for that possibility? that she's out there longing to come home. That's our job. Our job to stand shoulder to shoulder and to make a difference for our kids. And you certainly won't be standing alone. The entire state of Arkansas is behind you and the search for Morgan and for what you all do at the Morgan Nick Foundation. Thank you. Yeah, you, you, every, each and every one of you uh, are, are fighting for, for victims here in Arkansas. And uh, there is not a doubt in my mind that uh, uh, Morgan, if she knew what you were doing right now, uh, would be so incredibly proud of you. Uh, there is not a doubt in my mind, not a doubt in my mind. Uh, and uh, again, if there's anything that we can do to help you help the Morgan Nick Foundation, um, 
you know, even with KRK, with Fox, uh, whatever, um, you know, you have my number, uh, and you you have uh, you know contacts to Latricia and, and Kelly and Cara here. Uh, whatever we can do to help you and, and further your mission, uh, there is an open door. Thank you. It it really works when we all work together. Yes, it does. I want to get uh, and and just wrap up here. Kelly Ward, uh, Cara, thank you guys for for joining us. Any final words? Mitch, I would just say, you know, kind of like we always do, if anyone has information about this case, about what happened to Morgan, contact your law enforcement, your local agency, the Arkansas State Police. Um, even if you live in another state, contact your local law enforcement agency and they'll get you to the right place. It's like um, Colleen said, somebody knows something. There's someone out there who knows what happened, either because they got information from a friend or a family member or, you know, they, they witnessed it or, or whatever. So if you have any information, please let us know and let us um, bring Morgan home. Cara? And if you want to remain anonymous, call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. You can call 1-800-THE-LOST and remain anonymous and turn in any information that you have. And I'll just piggyback off of that. Um, um, like we say all the time, it's better to be a witness than a suspect. I mean, if you have any material information, um, it's in your best interest to come forward, contact Alma Police Department, um, and just let them know what you know, because if you're connected, you'll end up being an accomplice or, in a, in, you know, or a defendant. I mean, you want to bring that information forward. Um, so that the right people can be held responsible for this. And my heart goes out to, to the Nick family. It was great to meet you, Colleen. Thanks for having me here. Well, and, and we always say, uh, Colleen, here that, um, especially if there's more than one person involved, and listen, it's been almost 26 years. You know, whoever took Morgan, there, there's a part of me that just wants to say, that person's talked, right? I mean, somebody knows something, and you don't want to be an accomplice. And we always have this little thing here on our show that uh, the first person that, that goes to police will get likely have the best chance at a deal. Uh, and, and if there's a deal to be had. And, and you know, that's what uh, Cara was just saying. Um, and, and it's always great words of advice. And, and Colleen, I hope it's okay. I, I'm, this is something I've also kind of gotten used to uh, over the last couple of weeks by saying this, that it turns out um, it's been somewhat helpful. Um, especially in one of our last shows, uh, can't get into details there, but uh, in our last show, I told people, I told viewers that even if you don't feel comfortable contacting the Arkansas State Police, if you don't feel comfortable contacting the Elmo Police Department, uh, if you don't feel comfortable contacting the, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, call Latricia. Um, you know, she works in law enforcement. She, she would get that critical information uh, to to the, the into the right hands. Uh, call Kelly. Uh, and, well, Cara, no offense, but you're a defense attorney. Uh, <laughs> so, but but with their with their vast experience, um, and it's I, it proved to be helpful last week. So I, I raise that again. I say it again. Uh, these are all agencies that can be trusted uh, with information. But on the offhand that you don't, but and and you've heard Latricia talk over the last half hour and you feel more comfortable calling her saying, hey, I have a little bit of some information here that I'd like to relay, call Latricia, uh, call Kelly, former prosecutor. The, the, their phones are, are always on, except at you know, 2 a.m. But- uh, <laughs> They catch too that cases are not solved without people. We have to have people, witnesses, someone with some information. So if you have any information, please get that to law enforcement yep. because you cannot solve cases without people. Colleen, Nick, thank you very much for your time tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us tonight. And if you have any information about the disappearance of Morgan Nick, you are asked to call your local police department or the Elma, Arkansas Police Department. You can also call the Arkansas State Police. If you missed any part of our show tonight, you can watch it in its full entirety at kark.com. 
fox16.com and across all of our digital platforms. Important to note, Morgan Nick is still missing. This is an aged, progressed photo of Morgan right here. And you can find all of these on our website. You can also find it on the Morgan Nick Foundation's website. For now, I'm Mitch McCoy. I hope you have a good rest of your night.